Greetings, vinyl community and YouTubers everywhere. I want to wish you all a very happy new year and hope the new year is great and that you keep all of your new year's resolutions. I break mine every time. Yes, it's that time of year again. It's time for the top records of the year. I enjoy these videos uh, when other people do them. I'm going to do mine a little different this time. Uh, I've only watched one so far of yours, and I have uh, had already made up my list. So I want to get my video recorded before I watch too many of yours, because I don't want to be influenced by that. In the past, I've just shown one record uh, that was my favorite of the year and a new record for the year. And, of course, uh, like a vinyl collector, James, he shows the top 50 records and counts them down. Well, uh, I probably bought 50 new records last year, but in my collection here I have 16, and that's the 16 that were newly issued records in 2017. I probably have one or two others that uh, I tried to keep these a little bit separate, but you know, over the course of a year you get a few new albums and uh, you don't remember that those were 2017. Obviously if I don't remember them they wouldn't be towards the top of the list anyway. So I'm going to do my video a little bit different instead of just counting from 16 down to 1. Uh, I'm going to show uh, honorable mentions. I have 10 records I'm going to give an honorable mention to and I'll show those and a few of them I'll talk a little bit about and some of them I'll just show them. Uh, I didn't count but probably half of these I've shown in previous videos and other ones I have not shown in any video. So I'm going to have 10 honorable mentions and then I'm going to get to the runner-up three. That would be four, five, and six if you wanted to order them. And then I'll have the top three and uh, I'll maybe throw something out uh, depending on my mood, what's the top record. Uh, it's really hard uh, if you have a number of records you like to say that this is the top one and this is second or third. And that's why I decided to do a little different. So I'm going to start the video today with one of my honorable mentions. Got the t-shirt, got the whole package with these group. Gospel Beach. Another Summer of Love. Uh, this is kind of, I, I, they call it rock and roll uh, on Discogs. I'd call it kind of soft rock. I, I check this out ahead of time like I do on some of these or not normally in my favorite genres. Uh, I pre-ordered this well in advance and uh, I got it signed by the members of the band. Uh, they guaranteed, I think, two signatures and I got four signatures. Uh, limited edition Starburst Vinyl and a uh, good record uh, with the pre-order special package. You got the t-shirt, got the band members sign the record, got this uh, nice colored vinyl. It's not uh, see-through so I won't take it out of the package. Come with a nice 7 inch Blue vinyl come with a poster. From Bomp Records, packing slip. The only thing it was missing was uh, MP3 download or a CD for a little bit extra. I think I could have got a CD with it and I didn't notice that. So we're off and running on my top 16 records of the year that I purchased. And uh, don't let the t-shirts fool you because I'm going to have a few different t-shirts here and they don't necessarily have anything to do with who the winners are. See you on the next group. St. Vincent, Fear of the Future. 
You saw how much I like that record on the video I did here recently. Is this a giveaway of something in my top three? I'm going to show just a little group here of the honorable mentions. Samantha Fish. Chills and Fever. I've got, I think, all of her records on vinyl. She's a blues guitarist, blues singer. Good record. I like this record. These are not in any certain order. So the honorable mentions, I just pull a group of them out here. It's not whether I like this one better than that one. Uh, one of the reasons this one maybe didn't get higher up, uh, I got this record quite a while back. And also, I didn't like it quite as much as I did her two previous records. One of my favorites had all of their music long as I've been doing music, Randy Newman, Dark Matter. This one came with a download card. Terrific record. Uh, lots of commentary here. Comes with a lyric sheet. I listened to this record while I had my magnifying glass out. Reading the lyric sheet as it went along makes it easier to understand the words. This is one of those where the lyrics, the words, are just as important as the music. And uh, really happy to have this record. I love Randy Newman. I did a video about Pokey Lafarge. This is his 2017 180-gram clear blue vinyl digital download. Love Pokey Lafarge. And again... Uh, his previous record, I liked a little better than I did that one. Bet most of you don't know this one. Judith Owen, Somebody's Child, I would say singer-songwriter. This is the kind of record I might not have ever got. 180 gram download Carl card. Michael Fremer did an interview of her on YouTube. Interviewed her for about 45 minutes. That's one of the things that makes you interested in the music. Uh, you got to know her a little bit. You found out the inspiration for the lyrics in some of the songs that she did. And uh, it made it much more enjoyable. Hadn't have saw the interview and got to know the artist a little more, probably wouldn't have got that record. No, I guess this one's not making it into the top six. Mass Seduction, St. Vincent. Yeah, I love the package. I like uh, St. Vincent. I like the whole thing here. Uh, and this is a very fun, enjoyable project, but uh, wasn't good enough to make it into my top six. So we're winding. Beth Hart, Fire on the Floor. You saw me show that one earlier in the year. You know that's one of my favorites. That's going to be in the top three, the top six. You'll have to wait and see. The rest of the honorable mentions here. This one is fudging a little bit. Eightfold. This is Alice Phoebe Lou, L O U. Had to order this from the EU. It's not available, I don't believe, even today in the U.S. Sometimes after a year or so, some of these things show up on Amazon. I saw her, found out about her on YouTube, ordered this record from the EU. I think it came out late 2016. I didn't get it till 2017, and it probably was not available in the U.S. till 2017, but I wanted a chance to talk about this uh, girl. This is her only uh, full-length album. She's got some CDs and a couple uh, small ones out. A uh, young gal, singer, songwriter. She plays a guitar primarily and sings. She was born and raised in South Africa. When she was 18 years old, she hit the road. Well, she hit the air. She got on an airplane. She got on a boat. She'd been all over the world. She was down in Austin, South by Southwest, here a few years back, playing on the street for tips. She plays a lot in Germany in parks for tips. Uh, She's had some gigs where she traveled with some bigger name people and uh, she's very independent and values her freedom and uh, 
Uh, when you read about her, she's got a lot of YouTube videos. Find out. I think you'll like the music, but she's a person that, that is so interesting as you learn a little bit more about her, and she's still quite young. I think early 20s probably still. You'll enjoy the music, and uh, she's somebody to watch for in the future. Another record I got. I checked this one out and pre-ordered it. We'll take these all out. Marika Hackman, I'm Not Your Man. And this was a loser edition. Comes with colored vinyl. Comes with extra stuff. Cover comes with a 7-inch record. Uh, this is modern singer-songwriter, kind of pop-rocky uh, stuff. Very good. The lyrics are important. Uh, she's telling stories in these, and like so many of the, uh, what I maybe call the younger people's records, younger than me anyway, very enjoyable record, and uh, I checked it out, and I was happy enough with it. I pre-ordered the, uh, the nice edition. Showed this record not too long ago in one of my videos. Greg Allman, Southern Blood. And if you watch that video, you'll know I was disappointed in this record. Not the music. I think any given track here is probably excellent. Uh, good to excellent for sure. But the fact that he made this record in the process of when he was dying and the tune selection is all kind of a little morbid when you think of it in that way. And that was kind of an irritation and a turnoff to me. I'll come back later on and listen to a little bit of this record here and there where I'm not setting listening to the whole program. Well, the last of my honorable mentions was in uh, the four, five, and six slot, that uh, the runner up category, but. Oh, my girl, Beth Hart, fire on the floor. She didn't make it to the top six. I've got every, every record, I believe, that she has on vinyl. Probably have a few CDs. I've thought about doing a complete vinyl uh, video here. Vinyl Collector James has done that. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, kind of didn't want to repeat what he had already done. I like this so good. I sent uh, some of these out as VCLT earlier in the year to people. Uh, probably one of the reasons that uh, this got pushed out almost at the last minute of my top six was I've had this record almost the whole year. I've probably listened to it more than any of the other records in my year-end thing here. But, uh, you know, the more recent records, the newer records are uh, a little bit more shiny in your eyes than uh, those old ones that I've had for almost a year now. So, coming up next, records uh, 4, 5, and 6, I'm not going to order them, but the runner-up three records to my top six. Okay, we're down to the top six, the final six. Did uh, Derek Higgins uh, have a record? Is he going to be in the top six? Uh, I think he put out a CD, but I don't think he put out a record this last year. But I uh, wanted to advertise one of our senior members of the vinyl community. My next record is from... Uh, these are the runner-ups, four, five, and six slots, if you want to look at it that way. Hailing from Finland, the record from Finland. Won't get this pronounced right. Urjo Littonen, uh, Stolen Hearts. I saw uh, her on YouTube and had ordered this record from the EU. We got uh, one of our vinyl community members, Miko. Maybe he'll be watching this video, my first record from Finland. This gal is outstanding. She's been a around a while. She plays a terrific blues guitar, blues rock guitar. She's an excellent singer. She has a good band with her and uh, really happy to get a hold of this record. So this makes it into my runner-up position over there in Finland. They know how to do things right. Comes with a CD. 
so that you can get that on your computer, you can get it on your iPads, iPods, iPhones, other devices, other brands. So my first record from Finland, one of my favorites, you all probably know that, Diana Krall. I've got all of her records on vinyl, all there are except maybe a bootleg or two from the EU. This is her newest record, Turn Up the Quiet. I love this record. Uh, another one of these, I'll probably early this next year uh, show all my Diana Crawl records. I got a, a number of them are audio file, 45 RPM, and one of the things the sound quality is important to her, all of her records, all of her CDs from the first one I ever got years ago are outstanding sound quality. Who knocked Beth Hart? Out of my uh, runner-up position, the four, five, and six. Let me get this one out. This gal. Most of you are not going to know who she is. This record is Dreams and Daggers. The uh, artist's name is Cecile McLaurin Salvant. This is a three-record set. And it opens up like this. Not crazy about the artwork. Uh, maybe just the weakest part if there was anything weak about this. This record could have easily been my record of the year. What is this? Who is she? What kind of music is this? She is a jazz singer, as you all know, female vocal. That's my favorite category. She plays with her regular group, which is a jazz trio, piano, upright bass, and drums. On a few of the tracks here, she has some violins, cellos, and stuff, group playing. This is a live record. was recorded uh, at the Village Vanguard in New York live and at the Demina Center. I don't know where that is. The sound quality is outstanding. When she's at the Village Vanguard, that's a lot smaller setting, and of course you can hear the, uh, the audience uh, participation and enjoyment, and it actually adds to the music. Uh, one of the reviewers talked about her, said if there's anybody that can carry on the tradition of Billy Holiday, Sarah Vaughn, and Ella, this is the girl that can do it, and she is the girl that can do it. She has a voice. She has uh, the emotions in the music. Uh, it's just I don't have the words right now to explain that. I just got this record a couple days ago because I wanted it into my top ten, and I sat down and listened to this the other day, all three records beginning to end, and you get the live show, lots of variety here on the music. She does old tunes, uh, medium old tunes, and fairly modern tunes, and there's a lot of variety. And if you like uh, female jazz vocals and small group jazz, you will absolutely love this record. It's getting rave reviews. And in fact, it was sold out on Amazon. I would have had to wait. It was sold out every place else. I found a record store on Discogs that had it for the regular price. Sent it out to me, priority mail, and uh, because I wanted to get it in. Not this year's record. But this lady only has three records out. She hadn't been doing this too long. I first saw her on YouTube where I see most everything. For One to Love, this was her first record. Another thing about these records, they're all, all three of her records are pressed at RTI, and they're all lacquer cut by Kevin Gray. The sound quality on all of these, they're not advertised, any of them, as necessarily as being audiophile or anything. The, the sonics, the sound quality is outstanding. Her most recent one before uh, the one I picked here in my top six, Woman Child, you can get a good picture of what she looks like there. Has those kind of distinctive glasses. Uh, again, she's a singer. She writes a few songs. 
Uh, her father was Haitian. Her mother was French. When she was 18, she moved to France. Uh, just extreme talent. So, and like I say, that easily could have been my record of the year. Uh, I've already made, kind of made my decision. She bumped out probably Beth Hart from the runner-up position, but uh, uh, I'm really happy to have that record. And coming up next is my top three records of the year. Here they are. My pick for the top three, my top three favorite records of the year that I purchased. Probably not a surprise to anybody with this one. Lynn Stanley, The Moonlight Sessions, Volume 1. I did a video about this, said it was a very important project and potential album of the year. One of the things my top three here are in three completely different genres. So you really don't compare them one to the other. Which one do you like best? I've played this record a lot. I like this record. This was part of a two records. This is two. These are audio file, one step process, 45 RPM, two records in each one. This one come out uh, about in the summer. Uh, but part of the project, Moonlight Sessions, Volume 2, this one came out in, I believe, September and completes the project. She called this a breakup album. The tunes that she picked was the format. Uh, these are gorgeous records. Uh, had almost number 500 on that one. I got this one direct from Lynn. I got number 20. So I moved up the priority a little list uh, list a little bit on my uh, limited edition number. And these are gorgeous records and uh, could easily be one of my favorites. Again, we can say jazz vocalist, but completely different jazz vocal. Uh, the music is different. The singing is completely different than the Cecile McLaurin Salvant. Uh, but... Uh, those records have to be on it. Well, got the t-shirt on. I did a video for this record. Right up here in the front is probably a download card. Got the nice edition here where you can change it. Oh, here's the download on the back. Pure Comedy, Father John Misty. The only video I've watched so far is uh, Digging in the Crate. Diana, she picked this record as the record of the year. I can wholeheartedly agree. agree. This record is fantastic. The music is great. The lyrics are great, and uh, it got quite a bit of publicity. I haven't heard much lately. One of the things about this, very topical, but uh, some of it's a little bit not quite as serious as people made it out to be, a little bit tongue-in-cheek. When you watch the videos that go along with uh, some of the tunes on here, it gives you a little more insight into what he was thinking and uh, some of the art that you see here on some of the videos is actually animated and fits in with the lyrics in some of the words. So it gives you a little more insight into it. Uh, this uh, it fits in my art pop categories. The packaging is great. The music is great. And I think this is uh, an important record and uh, can easily be record of the year. Completely different category than the other one. My last record, haven't shown this record before. I've had this record for a while. Blues. Blues guitar. Blues rock. Joe Bonamassa live at Carnegie Hall, an acoustic evening. This was a fantastic concert. Um, a little different, the music, a little more variety. Uh, he has a gal, one of the gals playing with him. Other artists are setting in and playing in this concert. One of them is playing an electric cello. She's fantastic. I've seen videos of her before. Um, I got the uh, from the uh, 
to the label. My mind went blank there, but I, I get the emails from them. I pre-ordered this 180 gram yellow vinyl download card limited to 500 copies. You had to get in quick to get this baby. I ordered this direct from the EU, direct from the record label, pre-ordered it. Pro Vogue uh, mascot label group and uh, boy this record is fantastic you might notice this record still sealed limited to 500 copies well of course I wanted to actually play the record so I ordered the US set packaging everything is about the same Carnegie Hall, there's Joe with some of these instruments. You get a really good picture there on the back of a bomb the stage, the group. I'm not gonna try to open this all the way up, I guess I will. Poster. It's just regular black vinyl does have a download card. Had one little disappointment here. The U.S. record pressed at United. It's okay. Uh, I mean it sounds fine. Don't have any complaints with it. Uh, he's got a new record that I just pre-ordered coming out this next year. It'll be on next year's list. Him and Beth Hart doing one again. And again, I pre-ordered, well, I went ahead and got the limited edition, but I went ahead uh, from uh, the mascot label group, I think they're in Germany and Netherlands, wherever they are. Uh, I ordered uh, just a regular black vinyl, so I'll have one to listen to. Don't want to take a chance on uh, these United pressings, how they're going to sound. So that's uh, my top three records of the year, Joe Bonamassa. Live at Carnegie Hall, an acoustic evening, Father John Misty, and Lynn Stanley. So, hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, I'm looking forward now to watching all of your videos uh, for the year end, and to start looking forward to this next year, and uh, try to come up with an even better group of records to show a year from now. So, Happy New Year, everybody!